Hello, hello and welcome. Um, as usual, I'm, I'm waiting for the confirmation from the chat that uh, we have audio, we have webcam, we have everything so we can start. Let's see. As soon as somebody from the chat will say, yes, we can hear you. Come on, guys. Boobs, no, no boobs. Okay, sound confirmed. So here we go. So I am... Uh, uh, Stefano Casillo, you know me as uh, Kunos, and uh, we are here, back again, second episode of this uh, um, of this season uh, from the Netherlands. As you can see behind me, wonderful weather today. I really can't wait to finish this and uh, get out and get a bit of sun, which always helps and Sunday afternoon I got my coffee Dutch coffee which is something that um, I started to experience here so first of all um, there was a, there was a, a guitar intro um, for for today but I had some technical uh, problems um, I tried to do that uh, using OPS but I found that there, there was a, a slight delay between uh, the, the microphone uh, picking up the guitar and the desktop backing track, so that didn't really sound right. I tried to order uh, a small mixer that should fix uh, this online. It was supposed to arrive yesterday. And uh, this time, you know, the very efficient uh, Dutch courier system failed me. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be something that we do uh, next time. Um, so let's go straight into uh, the um, this kind of slightly different thing that I want to do uh, this time, which is start with some questions that uh, I got on the comment section of the last uh, stream. And, um, you know, and what I suggest, you know, if, if during our final uh, question and answer, uh, if, if you see that your question gets lost in, in all the messages, um, just write it down as a comment once the stream is finished and uh, I will have a look at it. Um, of course, um, you can imagine that um, a lot of these questions are, tend to be uh, wish list so um, they 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 uh, most most of them are you know are, are we going to get this are we going to get that which is fantastic because it really shows um, how much you guys uh, love the software and want to see um, stuff improved and added to software is is still a positive message um, for me uh, because you know it would be a, a a terrible situation where I say okay so what 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 do you want to ask and nobody has questions. Um, of course, those questions uh, can be um, a bit depressing to answer because most of the time the answer is no or I don't know and, and things like that. And uh, this is something I already talked in one of my previous streams, and it's not really about. Um, no, because it's, it's stupid or no, because don't want to do that. Um, I think pretty much every um, suggestion or request that I that I seen on the Internet is is usually already been discussed uh, many times uh, by us or um, evaluated at a certain point. And the reason why is not already in Assetto Corsa is mostly comes down to the fact that you know the reality of the fact is that you still we still have a, a limited amount of uh, developer time that we can dedicate um, to 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 develop a set of courses. So it's simply impossible to do everything, and uh, you know we we need to to uh, identify <coughs> what are the 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 various parts of the software that need attention. And especially in a situation right we are now where we are doing 
pretty frequent updates, uh, probably around one update every two months. And two months is, 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 is a very short period when it comes to software, because especially when it comes to a, a software like it is now, Seto Corsa, with so much content, um, it's very difficult to make substantial changes um, to the software in two months and come out with something that is uh, stable. So it is possible that in the future we, we will have, a, um, especially this summer, um, we, we still haven't decided yet any date or um, release um, plan for the future, but it could be possible that after the next update, we take a little bit or more time that could allow us to work on something that will require a little bit more testing. Anyway, so um, let's go back. Uh, let's let's start with the question. So, I mean, don't get offended if your question is is not here. Most probably is not here because the answer is no. Uh, but it's not a final no. It's just it's not at the moment what we're working right now in the in the next week or something like that as you know our plans is very very short term it's like okay what are we going to do this week or next week it's not it's not a, a usually um long time schedule okay so let's start so uh, this is going to be to be fun because i have to read these names uh, which uh could turn out to be a little bit uh fun Anyway, so NC Labs, this one is easy. Any chance for raw feed, for feedback option? So um, I hope I understand what raw force feedback is. Um, as far as, as I understand it, it means a force feedback that doesn't go through a multiplier that is designed to keep this force feedback within the range of um, steering wheel, what steering wheels can do. Um, so um, I don't, I don't really know because one big problem that that we have with this is that um, in Assetto Corsa we really don't ask at all. It, it, you guys probably have seen interviews from us that we talk about the kind of big uh, spreadsheet with all the data that we requ request to um, when, when we get the license for a car and um, we don't request at all any data regarding um, uh, power steering so um, it, it is pretty easy uh, to get the raw force feedback um, from um, so without a multiplier and just put it, I don't know, in a, in a shared memory or something like that. The problem is that, especially for modern cars, you will have situations where um, that car has power steering and because we, we basically never ask this to, to the licensors, we have no idea of what number is there, how the power steering is working. So um, it is possible. I, I don't know how useful it's going to be. And um, to use it straight with a direct input steering wheel, also I don't know because you might find yourself having to adjust all the time or clipping, um, unless of course you have a very powerful steering wheel and that would be interesting. But again, as I was saying, you. you you will find yourself in cars like the Exos or you know even the GT3s where you will find the steering wheel incredibly heavy and is not like that in a real car. Okay, let's move on. So Mantas Isganaitis. Um, what's the time limit to finish qualification after the time is over? Um, I suppose he's talking about um, multiplayer. Um, in this case, there is a, a server setting in the multiplayer um, to to actually uh, decide uh, which what percentage of the pole position uh, time is uh, the, the server will wait for at the end of the qualification. Um, this is something that I would like to improve um, and make it more similar to the single player. 
where the, the, the actually the software is also analyzing what the cars are doing. So if you have a situation where all the cars had have seen the, 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 the final lap, the checker uh, flag, uh, there is no point to wait for this time. Um, that can get incredibly long at, at uh, tracks like the Notion Life, um, which always, you know, pose problems because you, you think about something that sort of makes sense for other tracks and you go like, well, okay, even if a lap is two minutes and people have to wait two minutes and a half to start the race, it's not a big deal. But when your lap time is 10 minutes, um, then it can become, it can become a big deal. So the, my plan is to um, move the same logic that we have on the, on the client when you do the, the single player to the, to the multiplayer. So the server is saying, well, okay, nobody is really well, they're all done, or they are just sitting in the pits doing nothing, so let's move on. Right, so Cats on Slicks uh, ask uh, if I'm nervous during a live stream. No. <laughs> uh, generally, uh, I always had a very um, a, a kind of character that mm, I don't really care. I am not. I don't tend to be very nervous in front of uh, people, and that was... Since I was a kid, I never had problems with uh, exams or situation like that. So yeah, uh, and I think also, um, you know, the, the background as um, a guitarist uh, sort of helped me in this kind of things where, of course, you, you get the thrill when when the thing starts. It's, it's not really a big deal. I, I, you know, luckily, I have a character that you know, can get over it very quickly. So DJ Boko Boko, um, you made a question regarding machine learning you know, in the previous week. Um, I guess people are not using in games yet. Um, machine learning is 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 uh, is a big word that can mean uh, lots of different things. Um, Personally, I, I can answer for Assetto Corsa. Uh, the main reason why we don't use uh, something like that is um, mostly for the processing time that it takes um, before you release something. And uh, the other thing is uh, sort of um, artificial intelligence that um, learn with time uh, on the uh, client machine, on the customer machine, that's also a, a very dangerous situation because um, basically you never know what the user is using uh, while in a situation like we are in a set of course we can pretty much be sure of what the you guys are what, what your experience with the artificial intelligence is because it, it doesn't evolve in any way so um, what I see on my machine is very similar to what you're seeing on yours um, probably in other type of games I would imagine that um, it could be more useful but um, again I wouldn't I wouldn't call myself um, an expert in this kind of things um, so I wouldn't really know um, Ren, Renz de Rens de Coq. Can it be made possible to change the tire pressure in the pit stop with dynamic temperature, the air and track, the, the tires will need matching pressure accordingly. That's totally um, reasonable and uh, I hope um, to be able to add this um, straight away. So, so Dane Ricardo asks, uh, are there plans to add races with time duration? Yeah, this has been a plan for quite a long time. So it, it's definitely on the radar and still didn't really have the time to uh, look into it. It's, uh, it's also something that has to do with, um, it basically will have to be implemented twice, once for the single player, once for the, um, f for the multiplayer it, and every time I start to think about the single player situation my head starts to hurt because um, 
it becomes really complicated be because the AI doesn't even know how many laps is going to run in that race. So that's 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 a very complicated problem to solve. Um, and you might have noticed the AI has a lot of problems when it comes to uh, racing uh, quick races, so without any qualify session or practice session. And the reason is because the AI will have to uh, come up with a race strategy based on literally nothing. So they have no idea how much fuel is needed for um, to complete a lap. They, they have no idea how long a lap is going to be. So um they 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 do they do uh, uh we, we have an algorithm that is uh, guesstimating the amount of fuel that might be needed for a lap but um as you can imagine the algorithm can make a lot of mistakes and um so the the amount of fuel that the ai put at the beginning of the race it's uh, it, it could be wrong by a big margin um, so adding time to that, so saying, well, this race is going to be 20 laps and you don't even know how long a lap is going to be. So the AI has absolutely no idea how much fuel will have to put in it. So it's, it's quite complicated. So it could be possible that we bring this in, um, only as a, um, a multiplayer option. Uh, so leave the problem to the players, basically. The, do you think there will ever be fully laser scan tracks from North America? Um, yes, we, we that, that's the plan. That's the plan. Um, we talked about it a couple of times, so what track to do after, um, you know, this one is done, the Red Bull ring, and uh, we would really like to do a track from North America, so. Let's hope. The flying cades, uh, in my opinion, ah, this is one about the dampers. So uh, very quickly, um, he's asking about uh, um, s implementing, I think, implementing dampers as lookup tables. Uh, it's not incredibly clear from the question, but I think that that's what he's talking about. And it's definitely something that um, I've been talking with Aris for a long time. And the big problem in going uh, lookup tables for, uh, for dampers is um, the, how, how you do the setup. Um, because with the setup, you can sort of change the slopes of the, the, the way the curve of the, the damper will work. Um, so you have your threshold for fast and slow, and uh, but by changing the settings, you, you, you change you change the two slopes of the, of the two lines. But if you have a lookup table, um, you lose the possibility to have setups unless you start to build uh, a huge amount of lookup tables that contains all the possible combination of values. So that's the thing that stopped us uh, from implementing it right now um, because it's very easy to implement but then it will lock us into one lookup table or a series of lookup table and lose that possibility to say I want to you know change the the fast bump or something like that um, will brake temperature affect tire pressures um, we will start. We will start um, adding this these effects um, a little bit at a time. So um, right now, Aris is, has started to play with the with the new code with the um, with the brake uh, temperatures that I uh, gave him at the beginning of this week. So um, so we are going to see how that works and but definitely we already talk about how to exchange um heat between um tires and and um and discs um of course 
when when it comes to these things the the big the biggest problem is not really code code is going to be very very easy there is going to be just a parameter that controls how this exchange is uh, taking place but if you don't have data to validate your your things with it it's just going to be pure guesswork so um we'll take things a step at a time it, it's also very possible that we will put a parameter in but most cars will just set it to zero and will not use it so we will see um so alb 639 my question is you hit a wrong home run with a set of course yeah blah blah in the, the community however in what way you wish that you ah you did things differently in a set of course 1.0 so it basically is asking you know if i had to start from scratch if i would do something differently uh to be honest uh, apart from something very technical like um give a little bit more time to write a better system for handling lap times and things like that you know that that's I think I already talked about this. It's it's amazing how it's a second time because I wasn't happy about that with Netcar. I went completely in a different direction with Assetto Corsa and I'm not happy with that with Assetto Corsa either. So yeah, it looks like, you know, I can't write that code. So that's the only thing right now that comes into my head. FIFA double. Um, blah 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 blah. Thank you for the compliments. What's the question? My question is simple one uh, Can we have the possibility to save the race in single player mode and infinite laps in 24 hours? So it's it's similar to the question above. So, same problems go, of course. 24 hour race format, 24 hours in a way. The artificial intelligence is easier because you just put full tank all the time and by the time you you will uh, start to think uh, to put a little bit less fuel is probably going to be your last stint uh, by but by that time you will have enough information to put the right amount of fuel so it's not a big uh, a big problem but saving the race uh, i just don't see that happening with uh, with a set of course it would be it's saving saving the entire state of the the simulation if your simulation software is not pro, you know designed to do that from the beginning is simply something that to add it to something that is already uh, done like a set of course that just doesn't make sense it's, it's going to be a, a colossal work that uh, so uh, sadly i don't see that happening um, ah, can we adjust uh, brake pressure in each car? This is a, um, a long <laughs> um, dispute between me and Aris because I say, you know, well, what's the problem? Uh, in fact, the, the parameter is already there. Um, Aris doesn't like, doesn't like the idea. He doesn't like the idea of being able to um, have... Um, brake pressure to be open to the possibility to, to, to open behaviors in the car that are not realistic. Um, so um, the, the situation like, you know, you've seen many times situation where your rear tires never lock, um, things like that. So um, it's, it, it's an ongoing discussion. So. The, f the feature is already there. Uh, in fact, modded car uh, can add that parameter in the setup. It's just that in our cars at the moment, um, Aris totally doesn't like the idea. Me, I'm more like, who cares? Um, but we will see. Uh, will there be any changes to the UI and load screens in the PC version? Absolutely no. We, we definitely not. Sorry, the, the 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 guy was asking is uh, e, e buy faster. Um, no, I, I I don't see I don't see us um, wasting time there. But um, actually, on the load screen, I've just added something interesting, which is um, 
on the on the left side of the loading uh, screen in now now you get information about the server rules uh, when you join a multiplayer so you can see if the server has enabled or disabled things like traction control abs and so on because that could be for, that could be confusing um, and we're also going to probably redesign the the assist menu um, in multiplayer be because basically now the server is in control of your settings so it can get confusing where you say well i don't want traction control but then you get into a server that has a factory setting for the traction control and then your traction control will be on and uh, i think we had some cases of some you know um, guy that is selling himself like a sort of simulation expert that didn't realize that probably and then he went on uh, a famous eight blog saying I cannot spin the cars in a set of course uh, so I, th I think there are two options there you know one is full of shit and the other possibility is that he didn't understand that he connected to a server where the traction control was automatically turned on he didn't know that he didn't know how to turn it off and so he had this feeling that he couldn't spin uh, GT3 cars of course, you know, if you think you're a simulation expert and you cannot realize that the fucking trash control is working, probably you're not a simulation expert. But there you go. Uh, finally, well, it was very long. Uh, Stad Taffe. Stad Taffe. Is the new system for the step version of the cars um, still in work? Well, um, what we're talking about here is a, the, the, um, a system that will allow to, to, um, to create multiple versions of a car by sharing the 3D. Um, as you might remember from old streams, um, I'm not happy when in order to make uh, an S something version of a car, we have to copy the 3D of the car over and basically it just becomes another car for us to, to take care of and becomes another car for the graphic guys to take care. And um, I started to work on a system um, to sort of avoid that problem and, and allow uh, a more easy um, access to, um, to, to do that, that, kind of, that kind of thing, having an S1 car, but sharing the, the, the graphics and, and what have you. And the system is pretty much there, but it, sadly, you know, it's one of those things that uh, it's got so many ramification in testing that if it's really working or not, that um, in the crazy schedule that we have, it's just got uh, forgotten, uh, sadly. And, and we are in a bad situation there because we have the, the code is full of this thing where he's asking for the config of the car, but then the software is not really using it um, around. So at the moment, it's, it's a bad situation there. So I, I, I rather um, take it out completely. Um, the, the other thing that I was thinking was probably it will be easier um, to, to do what I just described in my words, which is probably a much more logical um, uh, way to approach problem where basically I, you have a car that doesn't have a, the graphics information and it's just saying, go fetch my graphics from this other folder. And, and probably the, the, the change will be more, a little bit more contained, but you know, we will see. At the moment, is let's say in, is in uh, standby. So, uh, just a quick old check that um, things are working. Okay, so let's get one started with what we have today, which is not going to be a very complicated um, implementation. Hold on. Um, what I what I want to do is add um, uh, an electronic controller 
to uh, our uh, drivetrain system. Um, we have a, we ne we have a, um, a, a new. Um, what did I do there? I don't know what did I do there. Um, we have a new system for um, all-wheel drive that uh, we st we came out for the first version in the last 1.6. Um, and it's radically different from the other system that we had. The other system that we had was um, a system where the engine was going into the differential, one differential, and this differential was splitting then into other two differential that were going to the front and rear tires. Now, it turns out that that kind of uh, layout is really something that was tested at the beginning, and so cars like the Audi Quattro, for example, have it, but it's not really how it is done for more performance related car where it looks like the the engine is going to the rear differential and then the two axles uh, front rear are sort of connected by another differential which really isn't a differential be because in my head the differential is something that's got three axes uh, coming in um, but it's more like clutch, if you want. So the, I call this um, um, AWD2. Um, so we did it first with the Alpha 155. And what we need now is to uh, allow, and, and that was a complete, because the Alpha had a viscous system um, to do the differentiation between the front and the rear axle. Um, it was something that I just implemented it to the code because it's the easiest way um, to do um, differentials. And um, now to, to bring this system to the other cars, we need uh, more electronic control. So Aris will have to, um, wants the, the, the ability to uh, control that with, uh, with electronic controllers. And I will also use this time to talk about a little bit uh, about um, the controllers. So, um, let's write the code first. We call it a two. So what we want to do here is to check if we have a, if we have a file to load this. loading it. This kind of dynamic control code was something that we um, started uh, a 
long time ago with Assetto Corsani. We're using it pretty much all over the place. It's one of the codes that is more used in Assetto Corsani, more reused in Assetto Corsani, I should say. So, um, this is going to be e. so. In order for this to work, we will have to have this file here. Okay, and let's make it into a controller uh, where I can copy this from here. Right, right now we don't care what's in there, we just want to make sure that it's loading it. because we changed you know the this file in the dot h that is used pretty much everywhere. okay we're done so okay so we just want to make sure that we find that um, line in the in the log so we know that it's loading it okay so we are looking for this line log we don't it's not there so usually I never remember if the data path contains or doesn't contain the the folder separator so probably that's what it is let's try again So now it's here, so it's loading. So now we have to do something with it, which is in this one. So what we want to change is this value here. So if controllers this guy, then That's about it. It's incredibly easy how this thing um, can work. Okay, so now we have to do something intelligent with this controller. So what we can do with this thing? We can attach ourselves to oversteer factor. So let me just go and fetch some data that you cannot see. data found so this is what Aris is doing for the for the Nissan understeer factor uh, fuck is going to get a, a look at the table 
Well, we just want to we just want to prove that it works. So let's do something very simple. Uh, let me remember what this understeer factor business is about. Oversteer factor. Oversteer factor is okay. It's the slip angle of the rear tires in radians. Okay. This difference of um, so let's say that. Say that at zero, we are not locking at all, and when we get up to twenty, we we lock a lot more. What did we use to lock here? Eight hundred. What this should do is, if we start to oversteer, it will start to move uh, torque to the front tires. By doing that, uh, you can keep accelerating. Oh God, it's so loud. You can keep accelerating, and the car will start to st straight, straighten up. So so we can see the quickly add it to the telemetry app. Uh, it's not the right one. How does this work to add stuff? I don't remember. Here it is. at the at the very beginning
value channel log car physics directory current log torque where are the uh, mean value zero max value Is read on physics thread, yes. Okay. Okay, so we should be able to see that now. Should be at the very beginning. here that should go up. Yeah, I can pass it. It's not enough to save me from spinning. At least it's proving the point that it's working. done for the um, what we had to do today just a very quick um, description of what these dynamic controller things is all about the idea when we have a, uh, a controller in a set of course let's get the complicated one like this one um, is like a cascade of operations so the first thing that you you do is like so you, you decide if how the result of this operation is combined with the current result. So the current result at the beginning is zero. So in this case, Aris is just starting with an add. And then what is happening is that you have an input value. Uh, in this case, is the gear of, of the car. And this input value goes into lookup table. And then it gets a result. And the result is filtered um so it doesn't change too quickly if you want and then it's clamped be, uh, within these limits and then it becomes the result of this operation so let's say for example that you know we start with three um as a gear which goes into the the, the lookup table and comes up as 10 or whatever so 10 is our value here then we go into the second part of the equation and uh, in this case, so we have 10 as a value, uh, our input becomes the uh, rear speed ratio. This, it, it would be nice to have somewhere on the forum where we put all these things that are available. The one that are here are just subsets of what's really available because what's really available in dynamic controller at the moment are all the, this one. So it is a little bit more than the one that are described there 
So in other words, so you get, again, you get an input, goes into lookup table, gets an output, get filtered, and gets added to the, to the value that was before, that in our case before it was 10, and so on and so on. So it, it, it gets um, calculated time over time, and then, uh, I mean, equation after equation, and then the result goes into the, 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 as a result of the evaluation of that controller, and then goes in whatever physics parameter that is used. So that's a, a very quick um, view of how this uh, system works. And we have controllers for a lot of stuff. We have controller for wings. Wings have slightly different code. Originally, it was the first controller that we wrote. In fact, in, in the code, it's called wing dynamic controller, I think. It's still separated. Yeah, it's still a separate code um, that eventually should just uh, re-merge inside this more generic dynamic controller uh, code. And something else that I did lately um, with a car that I tried in, in Vallelunga during our um, last event, and it was uh, the Lamborghini Aventador. And uh, the very interesting thing about that car was how the, the back of the car was moving under heavy braking. And um, <laughs> it was nice because I, I told that to Aris, I said, you know what, you know, it was. It felt somehow unstable at the back when you were uh, braking hard, but then it really wasn't unstable. So yeah, he told me that uh, the car has a clever system of uh, dynamically changing the brake bias um, in response to if the car was moving. So it's, it started with a very aggressive brake bias. Uh, really at the back, but as soon the car starts to um, develop an angle, uh, the brake bias uh, goes more to the front and the car sort of restabilizes itself. And so I really like the idea, so I also added uh, a brake bias uh, controller as well uh, to simulate that thing. Okay, so we almost one hour, my God, time is so fast when you code. Let's try to go um so let's try to uh go and uh see some questions ah cool ari says is in the chat as well so he could tell you all the bullshit that i said and if it was something uh, subs please oh my god it means my english is not good enough <laughs> Uh, if you have questions, guys, otherwise, you know, we will just uh, quickly end this one. Uh, question about the escaped pits, um, which, uh, yeah, I think it was, was already answered in, in, in the last stream. Uh, it's, it's something that we want to fix. I still don't know how. AC prefer, prefer each pet to TSC for con clock syncing. I have no idea what you're talking about. Um, how many lights of code in the whole project? Uh, I don't know. I think last time I checked was 100,000 something. So I would imagine that has been growing more than that. And I checked a long time ago, actually, probably more than one year ago. How did it go with the Aventador? What other cars did you get to drive? Um, the Aventador, I, I don't know why, but, but I got I got sick the first day, which is something that never happened to me. I think I was, in general, I was sick. Usually when I, when I get on a plane, I'm always a little bit sick the day after. Um, of probably something that I did, I eat, I don't know. But then I tried it the day after and it was absolutely perfect. I just had fun until I ran out of uh, fuel. Uh, so me, only the Aventador, I think Caris uh, drove uh, more stuff. Gregor asks, uh, very, very nice question. How, how does exactly stability control works in AC? Stability is something that I was talking with Aris today. 
and uh, stability control in, in AC is, is completely unrealistic. In fact, uh, me and Aris, we don't even consider it um, part of the car. We were talking about uh, doing something where you can switch um, a mode of the car, say sport or rain or whatever, and everything will change with it. But then we were saying we don't really have a realistic um, stability control in a set horse at all. Um, and there are basically two reasons for that. One is that, you know, we didn't go and implement it. The other one is um, we really don't, you know, la la last time I was reading something that, you know, it looks like one of the software that has more code in the world is car controllers. So it looks like, you know, they are into the million of lines of code. So um, in order to implement a stability control, you know, we will have to figure out how that work. And, you know, it's going to be pretty hard to, to do something, especially it's difficult that they are going to give you precise algorithms or how that works. But yeah, it's definitely that I want to try to do because at the moment I don't, I don't try, I don't like, um, I don't like how that, that really how the stability control is simply an arc is like an additional force that sort of stabilize your car it, it, it just slow down your car rotation that's how it works so it's got absolutely nothing realistic about it and i i definitely suggest you guys to just turn it off and forget it ever existed Uh, raw audio. Um, sadly, I don't know what is HPAT and TSC. So, yeah, if you if you repeat in the same way, sadly, I don't know what it is. So, um, the the way I check for clock drift is I use two function. Uh, Windows has basically two function to. Um, well, it's got more than two actually. Um, but two that can be used that are, you know, quick enough to, to be used in, in game development. One is called uh, time get time, and the other one is called um, get performance counter, something like that. And um, the time get time has got one millisecond uh, resolution, while the uh, query, query performs performance counter has sub millisecond precision so it's got more precision the problem is that the the one with one millisecond is more precise so the way that I check the drift is I, I check if the the difference between these two becomes too big the software switches to time get time so that's that that's the way I do it Uh, when developing Python apps for AC, what are the most performance taxing things that I should be looking for? Well, um, c creating stuff, uh, creating stuff like textures or things like that. That's 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 you should do that when the app is initialized, and uh, um, so don't 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 do it in the update. Where did you learn about? knowledge about car differential do Paseca, Paseca book cover all this sadly no actually it's incredible how differential is uh, is something that um, is really not treated at all in 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 the literature both differential in general uh, drivetrain system um, so it's very difficult especially because um, even technical books that talk about differential they took they they take um i think the wrong approach to the problem because they they talk in a way like uh, in a way like like uh, like the differential is moving torque from one axle to another which is not really what is happening um unless you have a torsion um but um so it's 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 um it's 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 incredibly long conversation and actually i i read somewhere i don't remember if it was reddit if it was uh, the ac forum or here um 
somebody was asking the possibility to have an app that shows where the torque is going. Um, but that's actually a very difficult thing to, to, to work out where the torque is going because that's not really how the differential is working. It's, it's more about locking and then try to, to get to axle to turn at the same way. Of course, when you do that, you are moving torque, but it's just a result of the locking. So it's not really the differential is saying, okay, so 30% here and 70% there. It just doesn't work like that. And if you try to do it like that with code, numbers will not add up. So um, I'm fighting with cables. <laughs> Um, questions uh, do, do I do I ever get tired of coding um, luckily not no um, no I, I, I will I will do this you know I, I, I will do this even if it wasn't my job basically so um, it, it didn't it didn't change you know it has been many years since I uh, started working on on netcar that was something that I did um, after my normal eight hours uh, coding job uh, in in the company where I was working I was coming back home and started to code netcar so luckily something that um, I love I love to um, solve things you know I, I like to have stuff happening on my screen that were not there the day before so and I think it's it becomes a little bit like a, a drug addict that needs that that kind of rush of you know uh, do something add something to the software so question from Nikki suspension high change in a car setup gives no effects of car balance well I don't believe that no, I just don't believe Definitely not. It's it's basically impossible. It's basically impossible. So well, I don't know. Come on a forum, discuss it with Aris, but I would say it's completely impossible. It it it's probably it's some sort of interaction with the suspension geometry and the jacking of the suspension geometry that is not showing you what you expect just because by changing the right height. Um, the, the 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 suspension geometry changed and the the jacking changed and so on so but it, it will basically um, in in order to stop that from happening uh, you know it it I will have to write code to stop it because it's so automatic in the physics engine that you just can't stop it. Minoni is asking about my Yamaha R6, just fast or scary? Uh, uh, to be honest, I wasn't really, you know, I, I think the R6 was the last thing that I did before I got married. So <laughs> it's one of those midlife crises. And you say like, you know, well, I always dream to have a, a bike like this, so let's buy it. Um, but, you know, Actually, it was quite ridiculous. I just fell the first day that I got it. <laughs> and I fell right in front of my house that had like an impossible um, uphill turn. Uh, so a motorbike like that, it just doesn't want to go slow. It doesn't want to turn. Um, and basically, uh, I, was, I was turning to, to get inside my house and there was a car in front. So I had to brake in the middle of this I don't know, I probably it's like, you know, 20 degrees, 25 degrees slope like this on the side. And I tried to hold my bike and I couldn't. And basically I fell the first day and it was so embarrassing. And um, I remember I had my, the back of my leg um, red with, uh, with um, you know, I, I did something to my muscle. I sort of damaged my muscle trying to hold the bike. Um, before I actually gave up and it fell, so um, I think I think that that day sort of gave me a bad a bad mojo about your R six thing. So um, every time I was going out, I was 
scared to death of what happens if I go home and there is a car in front and I have to break in that stupid corner. It's, yeah, the, 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 the place where I was living was incredibly hilly. So it was hills everywhere, not really a kind of place where you want to have that kind of bike. Um, Stefano would be very interested in gain how I gain my knowledge. If I did learn, if I go to university, no, I, no, I, di I, I didn't go to university. I, I did like three months um, in university, um, um, computer, sci uh, computer engineering um, in Italy, but um, I'm, I'm not really good in school, so uh, I'm not really able to, to um, sit down, listen to a teacher. I, yeah. Big, big problem with that. Um, so after three months, I got my first job as a programmer, so I left and so on, which, which is a big problem because um, a lot of time when I need to interact with people that have a, a more um, formal background, I, I miss the vocabulary, especially in Italy, because all my knowledge comes from books that are in English. So especially when I try to communicate with somebody with the formal knowledge in Italy, I just, it's, it's like we, sp we speak a different language. So it, it can, um, yeah, it can be difficult. But it, it's basically books, I think. Uh, the, the books that were important for me were Milliken, of course. Um, another very nice book is uh, Genta, uh, the Genta book. Um, it's very, it's, it's more simulation oriented. Um, and definitely from books, you can, you can get a very good grasp of uh, time models. And, um, but what they don't really have is rigid body simulation. I think there is a, there is a book that is called um, Vehicle Simulation with Rigid Body or something like that. If you look on the, let me check. Um, let me check that. Uh, simulation, something like that. Uh, I I don't remember, but it's um. It's a nice book. It's a nice book. Um, I will try to find it. Probably put it in the comments. And that's good. But what I was saying is that these kind of books don't really help you when it comes to um, organizing rigid body um, for simulation, and don't help at all when it comes to um, drivetrain simulation. That's something that is incredibly missing when it comes to to this kind of, of uh, literature. Uh, uh, can I get analog stick on fanatic wheels? Uh, I don't know. Um, uh, OK, I think. Oh, that's an interesting question. If you have one feature to magically appear in AC without you having to code it, what that would be? Well, I will have night appear magically so people don't bust my balls anymore <laughs> about it. <laughs> okay, guys, let's uh, let's close this one for today. And um, um, I'm I'm hoping to. Uh, try to expand this into something where I have um, uh, some other dev 
from from the team to join us um, during this stream uh, via Skype. So that would be, I think, uh, an interesting uh, evolution. So I will see if I can organize that for next time. Uh, hopefully the guys are not too shy. And I think it will be nice for you guys to um, get to know better the people. Um, you know, of course, of course, you know pretty well myself, Marco, Aris, there. Uh, very visible, but there are other great guys that um, you know are part of the team that you know are very interesting to talk with. And they tend to be a little bit more um, reserved than us. Um, so people like Manuel, Simone, Luca. Um, so we'll see if we can organize that next time. Until next week, uh, I will say ciao to you and have a good weekend and hand out of Sunday. If you still have one, I'm sure I will have one in the beach here in uh, Den Haag. And see you next week. Ciao.